good morning. My name's Susan and I'm welcoming you to my home this morning for morning prayers. If you'd like to follow with a service sheet, then please go to dedhamandardleyparishes.org.uk, look on the home page for services resources and look down the list until you see morning prayers too. Our reading today is taken from Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 to 15, so you might like to just take a moment to get your Bible and have that ready um, because it really helps to be able to see it clearly. Come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Most powerful Holy Spirit, come down upon us and open our hearts from heaven where the ordinary is made glorious and glory seems ordinary. Bathe us with the brilliance of your light like the morning dew. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Psalm 19. The heavens proclaim the glory of God and the firmament shows forth the work of his hands. Day unto day takes up the story and night unto night makes known the message. No speech, no word, no voice is heard, yet their span extends through all the earth their words to the utmost bounds of the world. There he has placed a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom coming from his tent, rejoices like a champion to run its course. At the end of the sky is the rising of the sun, and to the furthest end of the sky is its course. There is nothing concealed from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. And the commands of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy upon us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy upon us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy upon us. Let's just take a little time of silence to admit our own frailties and confess our own failings to God. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our own brokenness, to the ways that we wound our lives, the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. So we're reading through Hebrews together. And today I've been asked to share Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 to 18. Bearing in mind that we're looking at the better covenant that we're being offered. So I'll read it first. Beginning at verse 5. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honour because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, 
for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This passage um, just sort of reminds me of that line in a chorus that says, your word is like honey to my lips. This is a passage that you could read over and over again and just feel how much God really loves us and how willing he was to suffer in our place. In verse four, uh, six, where he says there is a place where somebody has testified, he's actually referring back to Psalm eight. And it's really rather lovely to go and read the whole of Psalm eight. But these three lines here are really taking us back to that Adam and Eve story in the Garden of Eden, when we were given dominion over the world but that was all spoilt by sin and creation was spoilt by sin. And so at the moment, we don't have everything uh, subjected to us yet, but we do see Jesus who was made just like us, a little lower than the angels for a while, but he is now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone, so that he could stand in our place. It is amazing, isn't it, that he was willing to take our place and take the punishment for everything that we've done wrong, that we're doing wrong and that we will do in the rest of our lives. And he's called the pioneer of our salvation. And he was perfected through his suffering. And yet this was the God who made everything and upholds creation. It's very powerful. Verse 11, both the one who makes us holy and the one who is holy are the same family. Do you ever stop to think that Jesus is your brother, that you are co-heir with Christ? We are part of an amazing family and Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. The quote in, in verse 12 comes from Psalm 22, verse 22. I will declare your name to be to my to my brothers and sisters in the assembly, I will sing your praises. We are the children of God. Those of us who have accepted this huge sacrifice of Jesus and have given our lives to him, have asked him to come into our heart, into our lives, and to help us to know him as our Lord and Savior. We have become part of the family of God. 
And just because we had flesh and blood, he was willing to share that our humanity so that we would know that he was just like us and that he had the power over death and could set us free from the, the, the work of the devil in our lives and the fear that we had of death because at death we would have ha faced a horrendous punishment from God. I think we really need to grasp verse 17 that he was made like us fully human in every way now there are some people who believed and still believe that Jesus wasn't really fully human he was just God pretending to be a human being but in order to make that sacrifice in order to be punished he became fully human and he paid the price for our sins and I think it's important to remember this morning that we must never think that Jesus doesn't feel things like we do he experienced every emotion and you should never doubt that he understands what you're feeling and what you're going through I'm so grateful that he died for me so that I know that my sins are forgiven, so that I know that when I die, I don't have any fear of standing before God because Jesus will come out and call me his sister and remind everybody that I'm part of his family. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. And I hope you have a sense of that too. And if there's anybody watching this this morning who has never really experienced that or doesn't really fully understand it, I would encourage you um, to get hold of um, or send a message to the office, to the, to the parish offices at Dedham and Ardley and there were many of us that would be very happy um, to talk with you and encourage you and share with you what knowing Jesus means in our lives. So please do do that and look forward to talking to you in the future. So let us continue our prayers now. Gracious God, for your love for us, gentle as a shower, healing our pain, binding our wounds, we give you thanks. For your love for us, sure as the dawn, transforming our darkness, revealing your truth, we give you thanks for your love for us, mercifully steadfast, calling us to you, raising us up. We give you thanks for your love for us, encouraging questions, open to doubts, making us vulnerable. We give you thanks. Draw us on, O Christ, to find wholeness through serving you by serving others in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Spirit of God, you speak to the spirit of those created in your own likeness. Penetrate into the depths of our spirits, into the storehouse of memories, remembered and forgotten, into the very depths of being, the very springs of personality, and cleanse and forgive, making us whole and holy that we may be yours and live in the new being of Christ our Lord. Amen. God of our lives, you are always calling us to follow you into the future, inviting us into new ventures, new challenges, new ways to care, new ways to touch the hearts of all. When we are fearful of the unknown, give us courage. When we worry that we are not up to the task, Remind us that you would not call us if you did not believe in us. And when we get tired or feel disappointed with the way things are going, remind us that you can bring change and hope out of the most difficult situations. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In work and in worship, God is with us. Gathered and scattered, God is with us. Now and always, God is with us. Thank you for joining us for morning prayers. I hope that you've enjoyed that and perhaps you'll come and join us again at five o'clock this evening when we'll be looking at Psalm 93. I hope you have a good day and I just pray that God will bless you, that he'll keep you, that he'll encourage you, that his face will shine upon you and that you'll have a real sense of his presence with you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>